Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and uh, you might just need to tell me if that's the right screen or if you can see presenter mode. Yeah, so that's still presenter mode, yeah. How about now? Perfect. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, I'm already seeing questions popping up in the chat, which is fantastic. And I definitely am going to leave time at the end to either have a discussion or, or answer as many questions as I can. But uh, here we are. I want to give a little bit of background about Starship. And we are bringing autonomous delivery to the world. You've probably seen these robots sort of rolling around town a little bit. And I wanted to provide a bit of background basically about what are these robots doing? Where have they come from? And our company, Starship Technologies, was founded by some of the Skype co-founders around about seven years ago now. And they were wanting to, they were looking at different opportunities about how robotics could really make the world a better place or make lives a little bit easier. And they came across last mile delivery or delivery as we know it. And it's a bit of a pain. You know, you've got to think about where am I when I'm having that uh, delivery? Am I going to be at home? Oh, do I need to switch some scheduling around? Um, how are they going to get in? All, the, all these sorts of things. And they thought we can make this much easier by introducing autonomous robots that are on demand and will only ever come to your house when you're there when you want. And they invented the delivery robot. This is what's quite um, humbling for even me to talk about is they invented the delivery robot. There was no such thing uh, more than seven years ago. But now fast forward, there are numerous billion dollar companies um, that we've all very much heard of that are introducing and creating and building delivery robots as we speak. And we just want to make life a little bit easier for people um, by offering this seamless delivery experience. So let's talk a little bit about the problem. Uh, talking for myself right now, I don't particularly enjoy grocery shopping. Um, and it seems like from statistics that we've been reading, lots of others don't either. Um, it's also quite expensive. Uh, there's actually a lot of hidden costs in delivery that actually end customers are not always aware of either. And we think by introducing delivery robots, we can really lower those costs for customers. And again, we all know what's happened over the last year and a half, unfortunately, but this really has accelerated this trend towards online grocery shopping. About 33% of people have actually made their first online grocery shop in the last six months. And we don't think that trend is gonna change. We think this trend is here to stay. And we've seen actually that we've all been ordering more things online, not just groceries. Um, and that simply means there's gonna be more cars on the road, more vans on the road doing these deliveries. That's actually gonna equal more congestion and pollution. And that's something that we're really looking to try and reduce as well with our sort of zero emissions delivery robots. We really think it's important that the, the delivery matches the vehicle. So what I mean by that is even in 20 years time, we don't think it makes sense to deliver two bags of groceries with a two ton self-driving fully electric car. It's still such a waste of energy. So the size of the delivery should match the size of the vehicle. Because again, why would you have a pizza or a burrito delivered by a self-driving fully electric car. Um, it's not particularly efficient. So enter delivery robots. Um, it's about saving people time. It's about taking cars off the road, having greener cities, greener environments, less congestion, less, congestion, less pollution. It's about saving money. And it's about saving people's time and, and making life a little bit easier. Now, what we've found with our delivery robots is that there is an accelerating trend to top-up shopping. Now, what does top-up shopping mean? It's where people are going to the shops, the grocery shops, more frequently, but buying less stuff. And this is obviously perfectly suited to delivery robots where they can carry two or three grocery bags, give or take. And one thing that lots of people um, are less informed about is actually when we go and do those big weekly shops. You know, you fill up the boot of your car or you're carrying like 18 bags trying to get them up the stairs to your apartment or whatever it might be. 
we actually waste up to 30% of that food that we buy on those big weekly shops. And it's because we're overbuying. We're, we're falling for the promotions and things like that that uh, always manage to get us. But a lot of that food is being wasted um, because we buy so much at a time. But when you do less, um, uh, more, more frequent shopping for less stuff and you're buying like a few days ahead, you actually only buy what you need. And again, this is where the robots can really, really help and um, really contribute to uh, less waste, less food waste, and just being more environmentally friendly, which is really important to us. So a little bit, that's a bit of background about why, they're, why we think robots are um, incredibly important now and, and, and moving forward. But how does it actually work? For, for some people on listening to me right now, they may not have actually used the service. I hope some people have used the service. Um, <coughs> if you haven't, it's, it's, it's an app like many others, uh, many other places that you would get your food um, through, a, through a mobile app. When you have such a complicated technology with robots traveling autonomously on pavements, it's really important that it's actually really simple for the end customer. So Starship food delivery app, you download it, you put things in a basket just like you would anywhere else, but, and then you're given an ETA of when your delivery might arrive. But instead of a person that you're seeing traveling to you if you can track them it's a little robot on your on your mobile screen that you can track on this uh, third image you can see and you can track that robot on its way to your home which is quite fun uh, the first couple of times and then when it's nearby it will show you uh, a screen that says you can unlock your robot this is unique to you so it's not like there's a code that you have to plug in on the robot or anything like that it's all done through the app and only you, um, the person that made that order, can unlock that robot. You take your couple of bags of groceries out, you close the lid, the robot might even thank you if it's in a good mood that day, and it will go off to its next delivery. So what about the robot itself? How, many, how does this thing work? We're talking about autonomous vehicles and, and autonomous robots on pavements and, and all sorts of things like that. So the robot's got 12 cameras, it's got a range of different sensors, time of flight cameras, stereo cameras, radar, ultrasonic sensors, which is like what you would find on the back of your car when you're parking. Um, it travels at a max speed of four miles an hour on the pavement, carries two or three bags of shopping. Uh, we use GPS, we use computer vision. GPS is actually only accurate to maybe three meters at the best of times. When you're traveling on a pavement, three meter accuracy is not safe. <laughs> you need much better accuracy. So we have one inch accuracy based from our computer vision and our maps, which is really, really important for safety. The robots can actually climb up and down curbs as well. But one of the really interesting things is the obstacle detection. Some people might think, well, surely these robots, you know, are they, are they safe on these pavements? Um, uh, and of course they are. Safety is the number one priority for us. And imagine like a bubble around the robot. It's like a bubble of awareness. And as soon as any object, pedestrian, dog, whatever it might be, um, sort of enters into the bubble of the awareness, the robot will slow down. And it, will, it can do a few things. It can come to a safe stop. It can maneuver out of the way or maneuver around an object, or it can actually back up and get out of the way if it's, say, a really narrow pavement or something like that. So um, the robot has all sorts of different sort of machine learning and neural networks to understand what to do in each of these different situations. Now, one question, I'm actually going to preempt it. I'm not sure if it's in the chat yet already, but I'm going to preempt this question. What about theft? What about vandalism? Things like that. I bet some of the people are thinking this right now. Surely this thing is stolen or is easily stolen? And it's a fair question. We even thought about this when this was being designed. You know, what, what would happen when these are out in the wild um, on, on public streets and things like that? But the robot has many theft prevention measures. So it is tracked to the nearest inch. We know where every single robot is. If a robot is goes off course immediately, it pings up to a human operator. The robot has 12 cameras, which can be recording. The robot has audio so it can speak. The robot has car sirens if it is lifted up or tampered with. 
So, and, and the lid is locked, of course. So it's going to be a bit of a embarrassing thing to get caught stealing, sort of trying to carry this quite heavy robot down the street, running away with it as it's screaming and the car sirens are going and uh, you get it home. And guess what? You've got your neighbor's milk and eggs. So uh, it's not really worth it. Very fortunately, we don't see this happen either. And again, it comes back to this social acceptance of um, technology and how we really care about making sure that we engage with the community to make sure this sort of thing doesn't happen. And we're very proud of, proud of that so far. A bit about the technology. As I was saying about computer vision, neural networks, machine learning and AI, the robot can really understand everything around it and its environment. It can pick up, the radars can pick up cars over hundred meters away to understand if it's safe or not to cross the road. It can tell the difference between a car and a reflection of a car in a car window and all sorts of things like that. Really, really important to understand how the robot makes decisions. <clears throat> this is the exciting bit though. This is real world commercial operations. This is not a test. This is not a pilot. This is not a one-off. These robots are out doing deliveries every single day in Northampton and tens of other cities around the world right now. In Northampton and Milton Keynes, there is the biggest fleet of delivery robots in the world. So not Silicon Valley, it's Milton Keynes and Northampton, which I think is really, really exciting. These robots are traveling autonomously. They can ping up to a human operator if needed, um, uh, who can take control. But the majority of time, 99% of the time, these robots are traveling autonomously. That means there's no one hiding in the bushes. You know, we don't have a handler or someone looking after the robots hiding in the bushes, seeing what's going on. These robots are out on their own. And uh, night or day, rain or shine, even in the snow, these robots are out seven days a week and 365 days a year. They're doing thousands and thousands of of autonomous deliveries every day right now. And this is shown by some of the statistics. We just reached over a one and a half million deliveries autonomously globally, millions of miles driven. And this statistic still blows my mind that the robots are crossing 80,000 roads every day. Every single day around the world, 80,000 roads, which is incredible. And also a testament, I think, to the safety of our robots that that's happening. Um, all the time, right now. Let's talk a little bit about Northampton. Um, we work with co-op, Tesco's, and other stores to get groceries. Um, we're serving about 25,000 homes right now in Northampton, but we're looking to expand that um, as quickly as possible, adding new grocery stores, done tens of thousands of orders that have been completed so far. Some of the most popular items, milk, bread, eggs, bananas, those common grocery items that most people buy. And we've got very low average delivery times as well. Now that map on the bottom right hand side, you might be thinking, what are all those blue dots? Those blue dots are all app downloads of people in Northampton. And that just shows the coverage that that shows also where our service areas are, you know, where those density of blue dots are is where the robots are delivering. But we have an, a huge amount of people in Northampton that have downloaded our app, a huge percentage of residents in the service areas have downloaded our app and have used our service, which is really incredible for us to see. What about regulatory stuff? You know, this is really important as well, especially in light of autonomous cars and, and things like that. Our robots are traveling at four miles an hour on pavements. It's very, very different to cars traveling at 70 miles an hour on roads and motorways and things like that. We actually recently got uh, half of the US states approving and legalizing laws for delivery robots. So now our robots can travel like basically on Route 66 from east to west, perfectly legally across the US, which I think is incredible if you think that this thing wasn't even invented sort of uh, six or seven years ago. And it's the same in the UK. We're working very closely with you know, lots of councils which are the, embracing this technology and a very sort of thought leading and understanding the benefits of this technology and Northampton included, of course, um, has been very welcoming. So we, we like working with regulators and governments and councils that 
do really appreciate and understand the benefits of technology and what it means and what it can do for the communities that it serves. This is some of the fun bits. So we love seeing our robots posted all over social media. And um, we shouldn't underestimate the strength of how viral these robots can be as well. And actually, I've, I've shared a picture of the Pacific Northampton Starship Deliveries Facebook group, which I really welcome anyone to join if they want. This is where our customers are sharing videos and pictures of their experiences with our robots, which is really amazing to see. Um, we're also sharing news about the robots in there and sort of statistics and metrics as well. But it's really important for us to build relationships with everybody in the community. And this is the way that we do it. If you ever want to get in touch with us or me, because I'm looking at this group as well, um, the Facebook group is definitely one of the best places to go for information. But we want to have fun. Delivery robots, uh, there's so much opportunity here to actually have some fun and have a great experience with getting your groceries. And we, co we call it the wow moment. So we actually did something around Valentine's Day. Uh, which some people may be aware of. <clears throat> We're also doing something for Father's Day, which I'll touch on, but I just wanted to share a 10 second video of what we love to see when people get their delivery. Hello, here's your romantic delivery. <laughs> We, we just love that joy. We, we, we love that. And we're seeing this all the time. Our robots speaking, they're doing special things on special days. Father's Day, for example, our robots are going to be telling dad jokes. So this Sunday our, in Northampton, our robots are going to be telling dad jokes, which I think we can appreciate might be pretty bad. But I'm sure we're going to see some of those videos um, scattered across social media. And again, I wanted to share some real customers from Northampton sharing their experiences you know robots to the rescue when you run out of milk it's a prime example of how our technology is used ingredients to make pancakes um and the one on the right also was thanking us uh, thanking the staff at co-op which i think was really nice so the staff at co-op and tesco's <clears throat> they're the ones packing these orders um into our robots which is amazing to see and there are hundreds of these sorts of pictures Anyone that's on TikTok as well, uh, our robots are all over TikTok. And again, we, we welcome anyone sharing their experiences or filming these robots, putting it on TikTok, putting it on YouTube, but millions and millions of views of these robots um, in Northampton and then viewed all around the world. So it's incredible to see um, you know, this fleet of robots in Northampton and in other areas in the new UK being seen across the US across the world where people go, wow, I thought this was gonna, maybe that was only in Silicon Valley. No, this is in Northampton, which is awesome. And then final slide from me before maybe we get to questions, comes back to this social acceptance side of things. <clears throat> it's really important that we become sort of a part of the local communities that we're operating in. And we're just quite humbled to be honest that how amazing they've integrated into the community and become part of the infrastructure. Um, and as I said earlier, Milton Keynes and Northampton actually have the biggest fleet of robots in the world, uh, which I think is quite an accomplishment. But again, this is just sharing some pictures um, over the last sort of six months or whatever it might be of um, how communities have engaged. We've got, a, we've got a wall in our office of thank you notes where people have dropped notes in after they've had their delivery from children, people, uh, uh, young families with children are some of, some of our most popular customers as well. And we love this. Our staff love this when, when they see all of this stuff. So we really encourage it and kind of want to thank everybody for the amazing reactions that we're seeing with our robots. So um, I think I'm at about 20 minutes now. So that might leave about 10 minutes for, questions so thank you and uh yeah over to the questions yeah that was great um henry i'm just looking on social media that's had really good engagement people posting about that um, cardi said that every single question her kids have asked you just answered in 20 minutes so 
you can pass on the uh, the recording of this uh, cardi that's great fantastic uh good time with father's day as well henry i think probably a few people have had some ideas there now to um, to use that yeah, I, I don't want to give the game away about what jokes may be said, but I think there's going to be a few different dad jokes, which uh, might be a bit cringy. Yeah, right. I'm just going to scroll through. There's lots of questions coming in. Um, how soon could the technology be rolled out to other towns around um, the county, more rural areas, maybe? Yeah, these robots are really suited to rural areas if there's pavement, um, but they can actually operate on the roads as well if the pavements are too narrow. But again, safety is kind of priority number one. Um, we will have news about how and where these are rolling out to more cities and towns in the near future. I can't share anything right now, but we are definitely expanding to more cities and towns this year. Good stuff. Uh, e &A Church has said, uh, fantastic that you brought these into Northampton and seeing them al alongside e-scooters. Can you say what attracted you here and how have you been received from your perspective? Yeah, good question. I think um, some people, we started in Milton Keynes, for those that aren't uh, aware, we started in Milton Keynes and Milton Keynes um, could be seen as quite special for some reasons, because of the redways and the underpasses and things like that. But we definitely wanted to prove that our robots can be operating in more normal city environments and town environments as well, where the pavements are normal or they're a bit busier. Um, and Northampton, again, obviously quite close to Milton Keynes, was a perfect place for us to, to prove that our robots can operate in more normal towns and cities as well. And on top of that, the, the local council and uh, local governors were incredibly welcoming of this technology. And I think I said earlier, but we really want to work with people that understand the benefits and can appreciate the new technology. And that was definitely a driving force for us in Northampton. Are there any improvements that could be made to the town and pavements and that kind of thing to increase the rollout? You know, you mentioned pavements earlier. Well, I think it's really important that the robots don't necessarily need special treatment. And the robots should be able to operate in real environments that are replicable, replicable not just around the UK, but also around the world. So I wouldn't necessarily say that anything needs to change. In, in the city for us to change our rollout or our thoughts around our rollout because the robots need to adapt and they need to be able to operate in maybe more difficult environments or a bumpy pavement or maybe there's roadworks and the robot has to find alternative routes and things like that. So that's the challenge. And I think just touching on this, autonomous cars on roads, there are very set rules when, when you're on a road. Anyone that drives, there are rules that we have to abide by. On the pavement, there's no rules. It's lawless on the pavement. And actually, that makes the technology really difficult to get right, which is why it's such a fantastic challenge that the robots have integrated and, and, and um, have gone down so well. Yeah. So how do they, um, how do they cope in, uh, in bad weather when it rains? Are they, are they affected by that? So the robots operate in the rain. They operate in the snow. When it's raining, you can imagine actually orders are probably going up because people don't necessarily want to get out of the house so much. Um, of course, every robot has their limit. Uh, you know, flash floods and, and hurricanes and things like that. We might want to, uh, we don't necessarily want to drown our robots. So there are definitely limits. But when it comes to normal rain, like today, for example, the weather's not particularly nice. The robots are out right now doing those deliveries. With, um, with the extended lockdown and then the easing, have you seen um, a variation of, of orders coming through? It's one thing I didn't touch on in the presentation, but it's a good question. We, we quadrupled our demand um, over the last sort of nine to 12 months in light of what's happened. So demand has quadrupled, which has been incredible. It's one of the reasons why there's a huge fleet of robots in Milton Keynes and Northampton at the moment. So... Um, the pandemic has definitely changed um, what our demand looks like and also our expansion strategy has basically accelerated um, because of this. And we definitely see those trends coming to stay. But one thing I would say is that, again, when things were looking really tough over the last year, um, we, we, we heard from so many different people that actually became reliant on our service, which was stressful for everybody but and, and and again quite a humbling experience so we wanted to make sure we were doing the best we could people that were self-isolating um they couldn't actually go to the store or they couldn't get a, a grocery slot online so um again like very thankful to everybody for for bearing with us as as we have grown 
Someone said that they're reassured to hear they operate in the rain because they've just ordered a sandwich. So that's good, another order. Fantastic. Uh, can you deliver hot food? Yes, we can. So we don't actually have any uh, merchants in Northampton right now, but we that, that will be changing. In Milton Keynes, just as a comparative example, we have about 30 different hot food merchants, fish and chips, pizzas, um, and everything in between. Fish and chips, some of the most popular items, uh, hot food items that we're delivering. So we'd definitely be looking to do that in Northampton as well. Brilliant. Michael asks, are you able to just touch on the pricing structure? Yeah, good question. Um, so a delivery costs uh, about 99p. Um, we actually have been really working hard to lower prices over the last couple of months because ultimately we want to be passing on any cost savings that we are incurring to our customers. So deliveries cost 99p, which I think is pretty reasonable. Um, and um, you pay Starship and uh, the co-op or the Tesco are going around and picking those groceries and putting them in the basket. But from a customer's perspective, it's it's a very small fee yeah loads of engagement it's fantastic um is it possible to deliver medicine yeah really great question so we actually have been looking into pharmacies pharmacy delivery medicines like that over-the-counter medicines even prescriptions with the right um permissions so uh short answer is definitely looking to do that in the future and uh maybe a less productive question was going to deliver alcohol and cigarettes asking for a friend we do deliver alcohol and there is actually about to be a pretty incredible deal that we're going to hopefully launch today which is uh, in light of a, a little birdie told us that there might be a football game on later um, and the robots are aware of that and i think there might be a beer and pizza deal launching today so uh might be worth having a little look later the 99p deliveries what distance does that cover um, our entire service area. So again, previously, we would actually have a dynamic fee where um, if you were further away, the delivery would be a little bit more, which of course makes sense because the costs are a little bit more. Um, but in light of us wanting to actually reduce costs and uh, passing that on to customers, that 99p covers our entire service area right now. So it doesn't actually matter where you live. Um, our service area might be two or three miles, depending on where you live in Northampton. So a couple of questions blended together. Can you see a time in the future where our pavements are crowded with robots? And would you see, or are you working on developing maybe drone technology? So um, on the drone tech technology question, um, I mean, anything is possible, but we do believe that autonomous sort of zero emissions delivery robots on pavements is actually a much more efficient way of getting your sort of top up groceries and your quick items that you might need over the over a few hours. We think drone deliveries are really a great technology, but probably more suited to really delivering to those rural areas. Think about delivering medicines again over forests or deserts or those hard to reach areas where humans can't drive or robots can't operate. That's where I think drones are really a fantastic use case. But when it comes to cities and, and towns, we think the robots are definitely much more efficient. And then in, in to the former part of the question, are we going to see sort of loads of robots around? Um, we don't think so. We think uh, you know, if you look at how much demand there is for top up shopping and what we're doing, um, you might see we, we did some calculations on this. And if we had 100 percent of the market, every single thing was a ro uh, was a robot delivery through Starship, you'd actually see a robot on the pavement like once a minute or something like that. And that might actually sound like a lot, once a minute seeing a robot. But think how many times you see pedestrians uh, on a pavement as well. It's probably a lot less than that. And that's if it was every single delivery. Um, and we're, we're, of course, nowhere near that right now. Claire says that her friend lives just around the corner from the co-op on the way in Barrow, but still gets her wine delivered. Fantastic. You um, mentioned, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, um, yeah, get the orders in tonight. That's that's definitely going to be needed. I think we might be a bit busy later. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned earlier about um, like taking cars off the road. What this um, what this enables and e-scooters is similar. They're looking for like the last mile, last half a mile 
um, of removing road journeys and putting them onto e-scooters. Do you work in collaboration with, you know, things like Voy or any other companies in any other cities around this technology or the whole programme? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I guess the short answer is I, I wouldn't necessarily say there's really close collaboration, but we are definitely interested in engaging with these other companies um, in sort of micro mobility and, and last mile uh, when it comes to reducing congestion and pollution. And we would definitely be open to having you know, more discussions on that. Yeah. Someone else says, yeah, they call them wine butlers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> I might use that. Steve Marshall again has said um, he's looking forward to competitors moving in and real life robot wars on Abington Street. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. The robots have appeared on Robot Wars, the official TV program. Um, as a, as a, they weren't fighting though. Our robots are much too cute to be fighting. Um, but no, uh, let's hope that doesn't happen anytime soon. Um, Claire again mentions about. Do you think it possibly then puts people off um, off walking? You know, it, you're moving people away from cars, maybe, which is good. But then, if people are less active, is that maybe a consequence? Yeah, it's a good question. I think that the, the short answer is choice. You have the choice to do that. And um, we would never want people to not walk to the shops. But I think what's really important is we as humans very much traditionally undervalue our time. And time is so valuable to us. And we've never been busier, uh, never been more stressed. And if we can save you time by running an errand that you may not necessarily want to do, so you can spend time doing what you want, which might even be going to the gym or it might be work playing with your kids or whatever. So if we can give that gift of time, let's say, back to you, then we think that's a massive win for us. But Ian also notes that you do age ID checks anyway for, for any alcohol that's, that's bought. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, question, does anyone indicate any privacy concerns regarding the cameras? Yeah, that that's um, it hasn't been a, a hot topic, but it has been raised once or twice, definitely. And when it comes to privacy, again, like incredibly important to us, the robots do have cameras, which is obviously where this is coming from. Now, when a uh, in that rare occasion that a human is overseeing a robot to maybe help make a decision for it, they actually have a like obfuscated view at the top. So there's no number plates, no faces, things like that. When that does change is in an incident of a theft or a vandalism or something like that, or an attempted theft or a vandalism. That's where um, we can make sure that we find out what's happening. But when it, uh, the second part to this is actually what happens to the data. These robots, there's thousands of, ro well, over a thousand robots globally out, all with their cameras. And that is such a huge amount of data. And it's irrelevant data. It's not important data. So the vast, vast majority of it is actually deleted within sort of 28 to 48 hours because it's too much to store. We only store the data if it's a case, of, if it's a safety issue, number one, but also if there's been a mapping issue, like the robots can improve somehow, like maybe that road crossing isn't perfect. We need to amend something and look at the footage and look at the mapping to see what we can do about it. But those are the only occasions where that footage is stored. So yeah, great question and really important to us. Is the, um, the technology that you're using, is that being used anywhere else? Is there any opportunities there for it to be used um, in any other way? We are on multiple college campuses in the US. So again, this is delivering food. So it's still within the same vertical. But when it comes to other types of things, the robots are also on industrial campuses in Germany and Denmark doing sort of sample delivery in factories and things like that. Someone mentioned medicines earlier, which I think is really important. So there are, we really think there is a wealth of opportunity in the future. But food delivery and grocery delivery is so huge. Um, we're going to tackle that one first. Yeah. Okay. Probably, um, probably the last question for you, Henry. I think when you get a lot of questions, that is usually the sign that people have been really engaged just around carbon neutral. And have you got any targets for that, considering how, um, how wide this network could grow? Yeah, we do, actually. And it was Clean Air Day yesterday. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, 17th. It was clean air day yesterday, I think. So um, we actually are, we have a team internally sort of building up some targets and also understanding exactly what metrics 
we have in terms of like what sort of offset and, and also uh, how much energy is our robots using. We actually found out the other day that our robots are using less energy to travel down the pavement than it does for a human to walk down the pavement, which is incredible. Um, but the short answer is yes. Uh, I won't share any statistics right now, but we have a team working on that. Okay. Brilliant. I think we'll end it there, Henry. That was, uh, yeah, that was great. That, um, that 30 minutes has just flown by 35 minutes. So yeah, really appreciate your time in coming in and talking about that. And hopefully maybe if we could do another event in the future, face-to-face -face physical event, we can get you along again to um, talk about progress. Thank you so much for having me. And again, everybody connect with me on LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out anytime and, and look forward to talking more.